event also acts as a launch of a report that uh, we did at Media Diversity Institute about anti-Semitism and anti-vax uh, discourse. Uh, there is um, um, a parallel with the Nuremberg. So um, this, like scientists and medical professionals today that are battling the pandemic are compared to Nazi doctors and, and nurses that were prosecuted at the Nuremberg trials for conducting medical experiments in Nazi concentration camps. Um, and so some activists, uh, anti-vax activists uh, today, um, they are claiming that there will be a similar trial against uh, those people who are in charge of the COVID-19 preventing measures. Uh, that, right, this comparison um, is very dangerous because it downplays uh, the gravity of the persecution and oppression of Jews under the Nazi regime, but also uh, throughout history. So it's a kind of a denial of what anti-Semitism has uh, caused and inflicted on, on those uh, who are Jewish or are also perceived as, as Jewish, not only Jewish people. So, so if you say that we, want, we don't deny it, uh, but we, we compare our suffering to, to the Jewish people who suffered during the Second World War, uh, it's, it means for many people that they are um, above all not anti-Semitic. So uh, I think it's a good way to, to sell uh, these ideas. now with the pandemic it uh, adapted and um, it's mainly I mean we, we saw hashtags with new world order and a lot of uh, anti-vaxxers talking about it but also like the newest version is the great reset that was mentioned before so there is a um, according to some people there is this uh, secret global elite controlling world events uh, plotting to establish a totalitarian uh, regime where humans are enslaved and they are doing this through the pandemic. This is a part of the uh, seemingly solution the people turn to. They look for someone to blame and they choose either anti-democratic uh, argumentations, uh, so blaming governments, parliaments uh, and their uh, measures, um, what they're doing to protect uh, um, uh, their societies, um, or they uh, define the outgroups, the enemies, uh, as uh, uh, some kind of secret elites, um, which are mainly a, a dog whistle for, for Jews uh, and Jewish people who form, uh, uh, who are claimed to form secret elites uh, to um, neither rule the world uh, or conquer the world or um, have uh, profits from it. So very old um, anti-Semitic top, uh, top boy, I would say. This is were uh, basically based on the misinformation, the lack of information about the Jewish practices, the religious practices, and the fact that Jewish people were apart from, from, from the majority society. And this made them the perfect uh, target. And uh, they uh, were accused for, for, uh, uh, for having uh, children's blood and using it for religious practices. And uh, just in brackets, it goes back or comes back or didn't go anywhere because it's there in the QAnon theory as well that uh, the members of Cabal are harvesting um, uh, children's uh, blood. So this, these tropes are uh, continuously there. Um, and this one was another another of our findings, like uh, how uh, anti-Semitic anti -Semitic dog whistles are used in the anti-vaccine uh, groups and, and movements. And we saw this, um, I make mean, just uh, two examples in France with the word qui, uh, which means who. Um, so you can see in protests uh, in the street, but also uh, uh, many posts on Facebook and Twitter with the hashtag qui, um, implying that there is uh, a Jewish elite, like with Jewish people in key uh, influential uh, sectors, and they are controlling uh, these sectors and deciding uh, what is happening with the COVID measures. Um, and, and this is also often used with uh, other phrases such as who is the enemy. Uh, so assumptions that the vaccines are uh, produced or funded by, by Jewish figures. And then there is the more classic uh, accusations against um, 
uh, for example, the uh, U.S. philanthropist uh, George Soros. Uh, uh, so it's the, like Jewish figures are used as a symbol of the whole, uh, like global elite that is identified as uh, Jewish. Is the after the Holocaust, uh, the Second World War, when uh, this kind of uh, explicit uh, Jewish. Um, content in these theories were more and more missing and what you also mentioned in this report that the coded language started to uh, be spread and uh, what you also said that it's, it's very uh, important that nowadays you, we have to read between the lines uh, that the, the Jewish uh, even the, the expression is not there it's the same conspiracy uh, myths and it's the same um, narrative Uh, but and fear is always there in every conspiracy theory fear is very very present and that's why in the report as well we emphasize the, the element of fear in, in this. Uh, I would say that um, we have seen in the last two years that people who turn to conspiracy ideologies uh, do so because they seek simple solutions for complex problems um, and we see that this is especially true um, within a deadly worldwide threatening pandemic we are in at the moment um, so this is obviously uh, a reason to frighten and confuse people and to make them feel uncertainty and a kind of loss of comfort. So they are seeking to stabilize themselves. Um, and one way um, to do this, um, as we see, is to deny the pandemic uh, totally and saying this is not really happening. And another way is, uh, of course, uh, looking for someone to blame. And, and, you know, when you turn these conspiracy theories uh, into these uh, um, kind of theories that explain everything in the world uh, that worries you, then uh, it can very easily turn into a cult uh, where uh, no external information can kind of, uh, you know, persuade you about uh, uh, you maybe being wrong uh, about something because everybody in the, on the outside can be the agent of the enemy, uh, basically, and from then on, you don't have to listen to them. For me, the most uh, striking uh, findings uh, through this uh, research, and by generally looking into antisemitism and conspiracy theories in COVID-19 specifically, is that even though that uh, anti-vaxxers blame um uh everything to a jewish conspiracy at the same time they see themselves as a, as the victim of a of of, of a holocaust or a vic victims of a, a new genocide uh, in all countries uh there are holocaust comparisons so uh, anti-vax uh, conspiracists are making a parallel between the current pandemic restrictions and the nazi germany um, so, uh, anti-vaxxers, some anti-vaxxers consider themselves as a persecuted minority within their own country. And uh, how, how we are seeing this is through, um, for example, the reproduction uh, of the Yellow Star of David uh, that was used in Nazi Germany and its occupied territories to identify Jewish people. So this is really a problem um, because uh, you have, uh, if you say you are a victim of something so enormous like uh, um, like the Holocaust, you have the perfect excuse to uh, endanger others. Um, and this is also fueled, of course, uh, by far-right uh, um, far right activists who see a uh, possibility um, to um, influence the anti-vax discourse in an anti-democratic direction. Uh, basically, they kind of also open up uh, these people to the possibility to defend themselves even via, um, you know, destroying democracy or, or basic values that we've been, you know, believing in for decades or, or even protect themselves, you know, uh, with violence uh, uh, against others. So, uh, for example, bringing um, these, uh, these fears anti-vaxxers anti have, for example, they uh, mistrust um, a lot of society actors, like, for example, the pharma industry, um, saying they're not uh, producing medicine to help people, but just to make money. And they, are also, uh, they also do mistrust the politicians, saying they're paid by pharma industries. 
And if you uh, add far right actors on this discourses, um, you can see that they try to activate people into action. So saying, if you mistrust uh, your government, why not overthrow it? 